Pi is often considered as the most intriguing and important number in all of mathematics. It's the 16th letter of the Greek alphabet, but that symbol wasn't used until 1706 by mathematician William Jones, who used that symbol because the letter in Greek, pronounced like our letter P, stands for perimeter. As pi is the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter, perimeter is a good word for it. No matter which circle you use to compute it, pi is always the same number and is used to represent the most widely known mathematical constant. Because lines and curves are related to one another, pi helps straight lines know what to do in relation to the curves they rely upon to stand up straight. Before Jones came up with this symbol back in 1706, we know the Egyptians and Babylonians were using the numbers of pi around 1900 BC, and possibly as far back as the building of the pyramids, as some of the pyramids are close to pi, which means they were using it, but some others say we don't know if they meant to do that or not, it might just be coincidence. Pi is a very old number, and no one knows who might have invented it. Its approximate value has been known since antiquity, and yet it's a number that no one can really pin down. It starts at 3, and then there's a decimal point, and it goes on to say 3.14159, but then the digits go on forever without repeating. Modern computers have calculated its value out to billions of places, but the digits of pi never end. In math, which helps create buildings and understand concepts and fly rocket ships and anything having to do with shape, pi helps find the lengths of areas or particular curve lines or planes. Pi makes calculations quicker and faster. Pi is important for such fields as engineering, physics, chemistry, and biology. It appears routinely in equations in physics and astronomy, and it is also used in probability and statistics. NASA uses pi to calculate the trajectories of spacecraft, to determine the sizes of craters, and to estimate the sizes of planets outside our solar system. Pi is useful to estimate the number of seconds in a year and describe the shape of the universe and its fundamental principles due to the relationship between the universe and the nature of the circle. The double helix of DNA revolves around pi and appears in the way that DNA folds. Pi is in the rainbow, in the pupil of a kitten's eye. It appears in colors and in music, tornadoes, and the rings that appear when a raindrop falls into water. Whether it's pipes running beneath your feet or power lines humming overhead, pi is what's helping you sort out how large a pipe you need in relation to water force or how large a wire you need to run a certain amount of power through it. It's involved in radio signals, TV, radar, telephones, navigation, global paths, global positioning, engineers used pi to solve problems for electrical applications, and it's used to track population dynamics. Clock designers use pi when designing pendulums for clocks, and aircraft designers use it to calculate areas of the skin of the aircraft. So it's old. It's used everywhere you find a curve and in your body, in cellular respiration, in the mathematical and biological calculations to sort out life. But no one knows where or who or when the number pi came into being. We just use it all the time. The Vitruvian Man is the famous drawing by Leonardo da Vinci, based on the anatomical drawings of a Roman architect named Vitruvius before him. Leonardo believed the workings of the human body to be an analogy for the workings of the universe, just as Vitruvius felt beautiful buildings found their mirror within the perfect proportions of the human body. We'll get more into that in a moment, but to wrap up pi, consider the question. If the body fits perfectly into pi, and pi into the body, and pi is never ending. What does that say about the human body? Phi is another irrational number, and no one knows where it came from either, but these things always go back to ancient Egypt and Babylonians and mysterious questions with few answers. Essentially, this ancient number represents the idea of proportion that creates building, artwork, and nature to unfold in the most pleasing ways to the eye and the soul of the beholder. Both pi and phi can be found everywhere and even together, such as in Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. Phi is described as a line because it cannot be represented as a fraction due to the irrational nature of it as a number, and yet the lines create curves, as we will see. 
This proportion represents the beauty of nature as nature seems to use this average to create all things from pine cones to flowers to shells to more. Its presence has been so well known the Greeks called it the dividing line in the extreme and mean ratio. It's also called the golden section, the golden ratio, and the golden mean. The point at which the golden cut divides a line is very specific. As you can see, line A is divided at the golden ratio of 1.618. If you give each division a letter, B is 1 to C's 0.618. B can further be divided with D being 1 and E being 0.618, and this can go on forever, getting smaller or larger until you get bored, but even that doesn't stop it. For whatever reason, it is this particular division of a line that creates such beauty in man-made architecture, art, and is so foundational in the world of nature that it has become famous. You can also see how phi can be represented in lines and geometric rectangles, as well as spirals known as the golden spiral because it's comprised of the golden mean as well as the Fibonacci spiral, because this sequence of numbers is also woven into the structures here that share stories with pi and phi, which brings us to our next point. Just as pi is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter, phi is simply the ratio of the line segments that result when a line is divided in one very special and unique way. Pi and phi are numbers that can represent an energy in motion, but they take no form until made into something in the material world by nature or by man. The energy of nature needs to transform from this pure potential of numbers with no form into the world of matter, and the Fibonacci sequence is a sequence of numbers that shows up very frequently in nature and can be considered much like ladder rungs this pure potential energy uses to get a foothold in the material world of nature and start building things. Starting with 0 and 1, each new number in the sequence is simply the sum of the two before it. 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5, and so on. The sequence also approximates phi if you divide a number by its superior number. As 5 divided by 3 is 1.666, and 8 divided by 5 is 1.60. After the 40th number in the sequence, the ratio is accurate to phi within 15 decimal places. This sequence was known as early as the 6th century AD by Indian mathematicians, but it was the Italian Leonardo Fibonacci who introduced it to the West in the 12th century after his travels throughout the Mediterranean world and North Africa. Again, as with all things mysterious, we don't know where it started or who made the initial discovery. You could say that pi is a constant related to circles and oscillations, and phi is a constant related to pentagons, fivefold symmetry, and more linear applications, and yet circles and lines are intimately connected and inseparable in the world of matter and non-matter, as much as cereal and milk are the same to the concept of breakfast. Phi, being 1.618, can also be expressed geometrically in the golden rectangle, and in it we can find the Fibonacci sequence. If we create a square with equal sides of 1 and add another one to stand next to it, we create another square through the length of one side of that rectangle, which creates a square of 2. And continue that process of evolution, the rectangles evolve in the pattern of the Fibonacci sequence. If we draw a quadrant in each square, the result is a spiral called the Fibonacci spiral, and this spiral can be clearly seen throughout nature and is the ratio in movement resulting in the most pleasing art known to man, and of course, all throughout nature. As the Fibonacci sequence, when divided by its preceding number, offers ratios averaging phi, we can see even more how pi, phi, and Fibonacci numbers are all related to one another and weave in and out of each other as they move into form from the formless. 
So we can see that you can choose lines or circles or spirals, like you can choose pi or phi or Fibonacci. You could consider them like separate numbers on a clock that convey the forward movement of time and the progress of life being made into matter from non-matter through the conceptual bridge of mathematics as a way for the human mind to have a language with which to contemplate nature as it arrives out of seemingly nothing but empty space. It's not possible to separate these numbers on the clock and still get a full picture, and so pi, phi, and Fibonacci are inseparable from one another in order to start looking through the lens of how matter appears from nowhere and how nature orchestrates its manifestations. Mathematics is the study of patterns, which means it is a tool with which to study the laws of nature. Fibonacci numbers tend to show up in nature surprisingly often, and so it seems that evolution and the spiral of growth tends to favor the Fibonacci sequence. It is found not only in the petals of flower numbers and in the clockwise and counterclockwise relationships of seed growth in pine cones and sunflowers. It is also used by artists and architects to create the most pleasing expressions of man, as man mimics the nature that created the human to mimic itself. Looking at other numbers now on our metaphorical clock face, let's next look at the platonic solids and fractals to see how important they are to the weave of creation and how inseparable from pi, phi, and Fibonacci they actually are. <laughs>